What's up guys? Welcome to Neuron Network Introduction and today I'm gonna show you the basic of Neuron Network using a single neuron. What is a perceptron? Drawing inspiration from the human brain, modern artificial neuron networks are built with the key component called neurons, much like their biological counterparts. The journey to the neuron network we utilize today began in 1943 with McCullut and Pitts who first modeled the functionality of the biological neuron. This ground will the way for the first practical artificial neuron network designed in 1958 by Frank Rosenblatt, known as Perceptron. In this video we will explore the interest of the Perceptron focusing on the fundament unit, the single neuron. Let's delve into the neuron's role, defined through a straightforward mathematical model. While this formula might appear doubting at first, it's quite straightforward once broken down. Let's demystify it together. Xi represents an input value, it's a numerical description feeding into the neuron. The beauty of it? there is no upper limit to the number of input we can use. Wi correspond to the weight assigned to each input. Not all input influence the output equally. Some have more substantial impact on neuron activation. We adjust this weight to scout the input appropriately. The objective of training is to automate the setting of this weight, optimize the neuron's ability to accurate predictions. Let's revisit our formula with a clear understanding of the core component involved. The symbol SUM stands for summation, guiding us through a process of adding multiple quantities. We start with i at 0, as indicated at the bottom of our summation symbol, and increase it by 1 until we reach n, which is not on the top. This n signifies the total number of inputs our network can handle. In practice, what we are doing is combining our input and the respecting wave iteration by iteration like so. Each input, xi, is multiplied by its weight, wi, and these products are then added together. Once we have this sum, it's fed into the what we call activation function, denoted by fx. This crucial step determines the neuron's output based on the combined input. Transitioning the input range from the potentially any value from negative infinity to positive infinity to a more manageable range, often between 0 and 1. This transformation through the activation function is what decides the behavior of our neuron, enabling it to make sense of the input it receives and respond in a meaningful way. Activation functions play a pivot role in neural networks, adding depth and complexity that's essential for learning. Here's the rationale. Imagine a neural network stripped of the activation function. In this bare-bones setup, neurons are limited to executing linear transformation on input, courtesy of their weights and bias. This simplicity comes with a catch. Regardless of how many layers you stack in this network, the outcome remains linear. This is because linear function, when combined, result in another linear function. This reduction to linearity might simplify the network, but its severely limited capabilities. Without the nuanced adjustment provided by the activation function, the network is incapable of tracking complex tasks. Essentially, it will be no different from our linear regression model, unable to grasp or learn beyond straight light relationships. Activation functions play a crucial role in neural networks by determining the output of neurons. Here are the few noteworthy ones. Identity. This function outputs the input directly, making it useful for problems where the output magnitude is proportional to the input. Range R, any real number. Binary step. Output only 0 or 1. Idea for binary classification task where a clear decision is required, range 0 or 1. Logistic sigmoid. Transfer input to the range between 0 and 1, making it perfect for models where you need probabilities such as logistic regression, range 0 to 1. Hyperbolic tangent. Similar to the logistic function, but output values from minus 1 to 1. It's useful when you want to model inputs that have both positive and negative values. Range minus 1 to 1. Simulation. First, we define input with the three nodes for our example. Next, we describe a neuron made of two parts one that combines input and another called the activation function that responds to this combination. We then connect the input to the neuron, adding weight modifier so some input will have stronger effect on the neuron's output. Neuron is then connected to the output. Let's start the simulation. We begin by setting values for the weights and the input values. Each input is multiplied by its corresponding weight. These weighted inputs are then added together by our summation function. Afterward, we apply the activation function to this sum to obtain the final output. We will return to this simulation later to train it. Now let's convert our simulation into code. Example will be written in C++. We start by defining Perceptron class. Let's add data fields. We know that neurons are defined by number of inputs, weight and activation function. 
Then we will add constructor that will set the field and that allows setting initial weight values. Finally, we need a method that will take input values and calculate neuron output. First, we need to calculate weighted sum of inputs. We iterate over every input, multiply it by corresponding weight, and then add them together. This value is then passed into activation function. We are done with our perception definition, but we need to define at least one activation function. For this example, we will add sigmoid activation function. We will now test this class using values from simulation. Let's run it. Supervised training guided learning with a mentor. Supervised training is a subset of machine learning where the model learns from dataset that's clearly labeled. This means every piece of input data comes with an associated output label. The objective here is for the model to discern the relationship between input and output. By understanding this mapping, the model can then accurately predict or classify outcomes for new, previously unseen data. Through numerous iterations of the training, we refine the model's ability to make predictions. The synthesis of utilizing a separate dataset for testing lies in our ability to assess whether our model has been overtrained or not. An overfit model is akin to a student who memorizes fact without understanding the concept, performing well on familiar problem but struggling with anything new. This model, having overly adapted to the training data, captures every detail, including irrelevant noise, at the expense of ability to apply its knowledge broadly to unseen data. Unsupervised training, self-guided exploration. Unsupervised learning network represents a fascinating domain of artificial intelligence where models learn and make inference from data without being explicitly programmed with the right answer. This network excels in identifying hidden pattern and relationship with unlabeled data, a task that mirrors the way humans often learn about the world around them. Two primary techniques with unsupervised learning are clustering and associations, each serving distinct purpose but together covering a broad spectrum of applications. Unsupervised learning networks, through these and other algorithms, offer powerful tools for exploring and understanding the hidden structure within data. By harnessing this method, we can derive significant insight and value from our dataset, even in the absence of clear guidelines or labels. We will now run a single training session, assuming the expected value for this input is 1. We begin by calculating the error for our neuron by subtracting its output value from the expected value, indicating how far off we were. We replace our activation function with a derivative passing our neuron's summed value into this function to obtain the training slope. We then apply this training slope to each neuron input as a correction factory for the weight values. Since each input influences the output differently, we adjust for this by multiplying the correction slope by the input value. Next, we multiply the result by the neuron's error. We then multiply that by training speed. This calculated value is added to the neuron's input weight to make corrections. We repeat this corrective process for every input node. This process represents just one iteration for a single neuron value. In training a real network, we repeat this process for every training value multiple times using varying training speed. Initially, when the error is large, we use a higher training speed. As the error decreases, we reduce the training speed to enhance precision in training. The final result is displayed with the value before training on the left and the value after training on the right. After one iteration with one value, we observe a slight improvement in output prediction accuracy. We will try to train our neuron to do simple space partitioning based on 2D points. For training purpose, we will use simple visualization that will be handled by SDL library. I have prepared code that can draw pixel on screen. Let's do a quick walkthrough. I define a simple window class that will handle window resource management, hide SDL code and simplify drawing. To do this, I define a few key methods. Constructor that will create window with specific title and size. Clear method that will fill windows with single color provided as argument. Lock and unlock surface method, we can access Windows Pixel only when surface is locked. Update window, that will refresh window with new pixel data. To put pixel method, both of them drawing point on screen, however second one actually draws square with center defined by x, y and specific size. And last method release data. Window class store window dimension and SDL pointer to window and its components. Now we can initialize SDL by running SDL init method and create a window with size 800 width and 600 height in pixels. Then we need to create application loop and we need to handle SDL events. 
we want to close our application on SDL quit event. We can finally draw something. First we clear surface to color black. Then we lock surface so we can access pixels and we draw points in a center. Now we unlock surface and update window. Window method implementation are pretty simple. In constructor we create SDL window and get access to our pixel surface. In the structure we just release it. Clear lock unlock methods are proxy method to SDL calls. Put pixel simply draw points into a buffer. Update window method copy pixel into screen buffer and then request windows refresh. We can start coding our neuron. First we define structure that will store pair of function and its derivation. We quickly define linear and sigmoid activation function and its derivation and we put them into an array of activation function. Once we have that, we redefine our perceptron. As previously, it will store input number, weight, activation function, but in addition we will store its derivation. New constructor does not allow manual weight initialization, we will randomize them on construction. Instead, we need to pass additional derivation function. Again, we need function that will calculate neuron output based on input. We also create training function that will train our neuron, using input expected output for that input and training step. We need weighted input sum for both training and calculation, so let's put it in separate method. There is one change compared to our previous example. We are always adding artificial input value 1. This way, even when neuron receives only zero's input value, it will be able to return non-zero value. Calculate method is straightforward now. We use input sum method and pass output to activation function. All we need to do now is write training method. We need to calculate how far off we were, so first we calculate actual neuron output for this input. Then we can subtract this value from expected. This way we know if we provide a too small or too big value. Next we need to calculate derivation that will tell us how function change depend on input. Is value getting bigger or smaller? This way we will know in which direction to move depend on error sign. If for example we need smaller values, we need to move in direction that our activation function is getting smaller. We can now iterate over each weight and correct it. For training and testing purpose, we need some data generation method. This method will generate array. Array will store 2D coordination, x, y, and expected value for that point 0 or 1. We will pass test function so generation function can use it to generate expected values. Our test function will split 2D space using line. Point above line will return 1, point below line 0. We will use this function to generate test set and training set. Next we define our perception instance. We will use two input values, one for x and one for y. In every frame we will try to assign color to every pixel on screen based on our perception output. We need to iterate over every pixel, normalize screen coordination to range 0 to 1, by simply dividing them by screen dimensions. We pass them to Percepton and assign different color depend if value was closer to 0 or 1. We run our code and we can see that at the moment all pixels are assigned to one value. And our application crashes on exit. I did check stack trace and looked like I tried to release too much. Crash can be simply fixed by removing free surface line. It's probably automatically released when window is closed. Now we will add the code to display our test value. I used wrong input values for put pixel method. We need to use sx and sy because test values are normalized and we need to upscale them to windows dimension. That's better. However, we also need to invert y axis because we want bigger y value to go up, but when we draw a pixel on screen, y is the opposite. All we need to do now is iterate over training set and run training method on perceptron. At first we will try step equal to 0 0.1. Now we can run code and we do see that our neuron actually did train itself to recognize linear pattern. When we try smaller step value, training will take longer. When we use bigger value, it will be faster, however it might not be too accurate. The easiest way to fix it, it might be simply change step depend on how many training iteration we done. 
We start with a big step value and then progressively make it smaller, depend on iteration number. One neuron has its limitation. Let's change our dataset to represent quadratic function. Our perceptron is not able to train itself to recognize the pattern. This is why we put neuron into networks. However, the topic is beyond the scope of this video. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future update. See you next time.